add to our team. Wages are competitive and benefits comprehensive. Call us today or visit circlesanitation.com. Welcome to Open Range. I'm your host, Gary Emmett. As we're talking to Dustin Governor of the Watchdog Network, who's got a long history in politics and has uh, travels in lots of circles. So Dustin, uh, welcome to Open Range. Um, money, I guess they call money the mother's milk of politics, right? And so if, if that's the case, and before we go into Democrats, I look at the governor's race that's happening and you go back historically all the way back to Ed Schaefer and the way through all the way through the Hovens and the Dalrymples and the Burghams. It seems like it takes money to be governor of North Dakota. And even on a federal level, if you, if you can't pay to play with your own money and resources, it's very difficult to win a big race in the state, isn't it? Yeah, and more so in the last decade or so because there's more money available. The changes in, in campaign finance laws nationally have impacted North Dakota. North Dakota is a cheap date when it comes to national entities influencing our elections. Uh, our elected officials like to bring that up when it comes to initiate measures, but it actually probably goes even further when it comes down to their own candidacies and, and being able to attract that outside money. Uh, you see in, in the governor's race now between uh, Tammy Miller, who is the Burgum handpicked candidate, uh, and, and they are riding the, the notion that all of a sudden she's the Trump candidate. Meanwhile, you have Kelly Armstrong, who's a sitting congressman that Donald Trump has declared in the past should be primary. And so even though you and I both know Kelly Armstrong is probably more conservative than Tammy Miller, it comes down to the fact that Donald Trump is more interested in having control and influence than actually uh, a philosophical uh, agreement. And, and so it doesn't matter that, that Kelly has voted 88% of the time with Donald Trump. Trump does not like him, so he's going after him. And that's probably going to benefit Tammy Miller, who also has the Bergam money behind her. So do you think with the Republicans on the statewide level, it's you know, Tom Campbell's in the congressional race. I mean, he's got, has lots of money. Is there a place for the Rick Beckers of the world or more of a populist movement to be able to grassroots it? Because if, if you take the general election, you have 350,000 people that vote just round in number. Primaries, maybe 100 to 130,000 tend to be partisan unless there's local races that drive it, like a mayor's race in Bismarck or Fargo. So those high turnouts are the partisan, I mean, it tends to be local that drive it or big money that pours money in. And you're, we're seeing a lot of advertising being spent on the TV networks for those races right now. And mm -hmm. is, my question is, does uh, Rick Becker have an opportunity with three candidates as more of a populist movement? And, and what is that number? Do they have to spend a couple million dollars in a primary to win or more? He does have a chance as long as the public is actually concerned about the issues. But if the public is only paying attention to who's spending the most money, then he doesn't have a chance. And so it comes down to the voters educating themselves. We like to think that North Dakota, because it votes Republican, that means that it's, it's more conservative and more well-informed. That may or may not be true because it, it, money talks. And the people who notice candidates are the ones who are watching TV, listening to radio, seeing ads on, on Facebook or wherever, and uh, whoever's got the most spending tends to win. It doesn't have anything to do with ideas. It's whoever has the most name identification and is able to establish themselves as the most able to win uh, through financing that, that people tend to vote for. And so the more money that gets pumped into North Dakota politics, the less the issues actually matter. Do you? I mean, I, I, when I opened up segment, I said you run in a lot of different circles and you have recently because of the CO2 pipeline, you've had some more liberals or, or even Democrats in your circle. I'm not saying you hadn't previously, you tended to be you know, conservative on fiscal issues. Is there any point, I mean, in your mind with these fights in the Republicans that the Democrats can get a, a, a foothold and make some gains or are we still, and I listen, I'm conservative all the way and I'm all Republican in my view as everybody knows that watches the show. but. Is, is there anything, I, I, I have advocated a stronger Democrat party helps Republicans and it's better for our state, but the Democrats just seem to be not making any inroads or getting any traction. 
I, I think that right now, any Democrat whose last name is not Heitkamp doesn't have much of a chance. Uh, if, if Heidi Heitkamp wanted to get in the governor's race, whether it's Tammy Miller or Kelly Armstrong, I think she'd have a very good shot. It'd be a horse race. Uh, if Joel Heitkamp wanted to get into the Senate race against Kevin Kramer, I think Kevin would still win, but Joel would put up a, a bigger fight than any other Democrat has since Pomeroy, Conrad, and Dorgan were in office. So uh, it, it really comes down to the fact that they don't have a, a flagship candidate anymore. And unless somebody with some serious name ID and approval track record can, can squeak in and get their foot in the door, they're going to be out to lunch unless the fight within the Republican Party starts to actually trickle out into the general public. If the general public realizes that the Republican Party is not what they think it is and is not doing what they say they're going to do just generally, then that could create an opening for Democrats, but they still have to get a handle on how to actually operate their own party. And as of right now, it's not clear that they know how to run a party at all. So they, when you take these corporate interests that have been kind of aligned and Republicans have been doing, um, you know, been pro-energy, um, and sometimes it, things like that get a little bit out of kilter a little bit, but people, if people vote their pocket, you know, pocketbooks, the old saying is, it's the economy stupid. I think Bill Clinton, came up with that against George Bush. Just the economy has been so good, people just tend to stay status quo. And, and I just, there's some good, sharp, young Democrats that I've interviewed and, and know a little bit, but they just can't seem to get any traction. And I'm not sure why. It, it is because they, they do not have a, a feeder system for funding in the state. And there's only so much out-of-state money that can go to them. There's not a lot of out-of-state funders that are win willing to let North Dakota continue to be a, a charity case for them, knowing that they're probably not going to get very far. Uh, what will, will really change the dynamic is if the public realizes that on things like the green agenda, Republicans have uh, flip-flopped on that 180 degrees. Uh, you have Governor Burgum and the establishment folks uh, embracing that because now they found a way to uh, direct federal tax dollars to the energy industry in the name of the green agenda through the CO2 program and the 45Q tax credits. You have Senator Kramer uh, adopting the carbon tariff approach of trying to make it more expensive for imports to come into America, which is gonna increase costs for Americans. If voters actually understand those policies that the Republican party has done a 180 degree flip-flop on those issues in order to make money for their friends and that it's gonna cost them in the end, things might change. But I'm not sure that that will actually help the Democrats because a lot of these things are democratic ideas to begin with and they don't really have a leg to stand on. You almost need a third party that is a conservative party and the, you know, depending on how this civil war within the Republican party have, it goes down in the next two to five years, uh, that might be the ultimate uh, end result is that you have a second party in North Dakota, but it's not the Democratic Party. It's a more conservative party. Interesting. We've been talking to Dustin Governor of the Watchdog Network. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Gary Eminence. That trampoline in your backyard, an insurance blind spot. Who knew this? At no cost today. Stories that make it possible. Going, hey, you know what? Um, let's let's look at it from a neutral.